you're watching Kenosha Community Television. Welcome to Gateway Connection, the program that offers an inside look at the people, programs, and efforts of Gateway Technical College to connect with the communities, people, and industry it serves. Gateway Connection. Welcome to Gateway Connection. I'm Dawn Marabella, and today we're talking with Kate Jerome, who's our instructor for horticulture. She's come today to talk to us a little bit about Earth Day and to give us a demonstration of what uh, activities are available for children at Earth Day celebration. Kate, thanks for coming. My pleasure, my pleasure. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what we have here? Well, one of the the uh, activities that we have for children. Children love to get their hands dirty, and so we are using recycled containers, and we've actually been collecting these from the faculty and staff because oh. they make little mini greenhouses. <gasps> they do. And so then the children will fill the mini greenhouse with soil, and then they'll plant their seeds, close it up, and take it home. Oh. And so it's, it's very simple, very easy, but they get to take something home with them, and then they'll have something that they'll remember Earth Day from. Yeah, it's a little so terrarium. It, it is. It's just it's, it's self-contained, which is wonderful. What a great idea to, to use at home, too. Right, right. So what kinds of things will will be planted in there. Well, I'm going to plant sunflowers in here today, but you can see from this one that um, we did earlier, this is lettuce, and oh, it's yeah. just growing. It, we had put the lettuce seeds in there, closed it up, which keeps it a little bit warm and keeps the humidity in. Mm -hmm. And then as the seeds germinate, we open the lid and you have a salad. Yes, you do. <laughs> and I see that there's different kinds uh -huh. of... There are four different kinds of lettuce in here, um, which makes it pretty as well as tasty. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. I'm actually really hungry looking <laughs> at it. It looks and great. This, this is just a larger container that I brought because you can go, you can do just about anything. And everybody sees these today from the grocery store. Everybody Organic has spinach them. and that sort of thing. It's a, again, it has the plastic lid on it. Well, I can't get it loose here. So it's a perfect little greenhouse. And it's basic household item, doesn't cost any doesn't money. Doesn't cost any money, and the only thing you have to be careful of is once you've planted it, it does have holes in the bottom, which oh, is, you yeah. need the holes for uh -huh. drainage, but you need to put it on a tray so that it doesn't run, water doesn't run everywhere. Oh, that's a good tip. So, Thank but you. otherwise, just about anything that you that has that's clear, ha at least has a clear lid, can be used. You can use yogurt containers, just about anything that oh. you recycle. Oh, that sounds so. And it lovely. teaches the kids a good lesson, too. That's the nice thing about it, is, is to reuse what we have. Yes, and, and I think, too, that everybody can be a gardener. You don't have to that's be right. a professional person you don't. to grow a garden and grow your own fruit and vegetables. You don't. You can grow your own things, right? And you can grow it on the windowsill, you can grow it on a patio. You don't have to have an in-ground garden to grow food which is one of the things I'm actually teaching a workshop in May on container gardening and we're going to be doing vegetable containers uh -huh. where you can grow tomatoes and peppers and we're going to do a salsa garden where you grow the cilantro and the oh, onions really? and everything in it for salsa so there, the, the possibilities are endless. So even if a person lives in an apartment they can still have but their it, herb gardens oh, and their, absolutely. their cilantro that sounds wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. All right, let me show you exactly how this is done. It's really not rocket science. I have soil that is basic potting soil mix. Okay. You can get it from any garden store. You can get it from hardware stores, um, big box stores. All of them have potting soil. Is there one that's better than the other? I always recommend that you go high end on potting soil because okay. low end potting soil tends to have more real soil in it, which means it compacts. Oh, I see. This potting soil has no soil in it. It's made out of peat moss and um, bark and some vermiculite, which helps drainage. So it's light, oh, it's very light. It's lightweight, and it is moistened. Before you start, you wanna make sure you moisten it, because if you put it in dry, then you try and water it, the seeds kind of wash away, and it oh. takes a while before it absorbs enough water. So I just take a bag, fill it with soil, and then put some water in there and mix it around with my hands. It really feels good this time of year to get your hands in the dirt. It does. Um, and that way you're ready to go with your mix. 
But it's, I noticed though it's not muddy, it's just no, moist. No, it's just moist. Like yes. a, it's like a, war, a like, wrung out sponge is what you're yes. aiming for. That's what you're aiming for. So as we fill the little container, this is so easy for kids to do. We usually have a big wheelbarrow full of soil and they get to get in there with a the scoop oh, and neat. fill up their containers and they absolutely love it. And I have kids that will come back two and three times during the day. Can I do another one, please? May I oh, do another really? one? Pack it down just a little bit. Not really tight, but you want a little bit of room at the top so that you so that when you water it, it contains the water for just a few minutes. Oh, okay. So don't fill it to the don't fill it top. to the top because then the water runs off and you have a mess. Okay. So we're against making messes if we can avoid it. This, I see, this, these are these are sunflowers. Yeah, these are sunflower seeds. Um, we. These actually were donated to us, which is a wonderful part of really? this whole thing is the garden centers in the area will donate their seeds from last year that have been used. How nice. And seeds are usually good for more than one year. So we have all these great seeds that we can use and give to the community. And so it's a really nice, nice give and take. You can see the sunflower seeds. The reason we choose sunflower seeds for the children is because they're large. The kids can pick them up and plant them rather than lettuce seeds, which are very tiny. And they can sometimes they can even Can't see what see they're them. doing. And then we just have them plant a few sunflower seeds. Those are about two and a half inches apart? Yeah, about three. two and a half, three inches apart. When you're working with kids, you can't go wrong. And, and then they take them and they just have them, we have them push them down just a little bit so that they stay in nice contact with the soil. They don't have to cover them up. It's so fine don't? just to push them down. You can, but it's not necessary. As long oh. as they're in contact with the soil, and then I generally will take, even though the soil is wet, there are air pockets, so I gener generally will take a spray bottle, just a plain old ordinary spray bottle and spritz it. That way it doesn't wash the seeds out. Okay. And then once... So that's better than just pouring water pouring, over it. pouring, right. These seeds don't move, don't wash as much as other seeds do, but if you have a smaller seed, any time you pour Washes it, they, they wash to the edge. Okay. And uh, you can make quite a mess. Once you're done, Snap it closed, and that's it. And then and it, how long does it take for that to germinate? Generally, it'll take about seven to ten days, depending on how warm it is. That's not bad. It's not bad. Kids get impatient. It's, ex it's exciting. Though. It is very only exciting. a week. A, yeah, a week, it's very and you exciting. You can see the little sprout. That's that's neat. Um, after they're done, I have the stu the the child write in a sharpie on the top what it is and the date that they did it. And uh, sometimes they won't put their name on it, and they'll decorate it. But and then I. The parent that is with them, I make sure they know that they have to put a tray under it when oh, it's watered. Oh, that's a good idea. Right. And as soon as you see the little green sprouts, the lid comes up and it stays off. You're kidding. Nope. So just as soon as they sprout up, I can get it off. take the lid off. Right. As soon as they sprout, you don't need you don't need the humidity in there anymore. Now they're just going to grow like they grow here. Does that go for all seeds? Mm -hmm. All seeds. As soon as the sprout, as soon oh. as you see green, that lid, lid comes off. Got it. Because otherwise it builds a little too much heat and too much humidity and then once those little shoots are up, you risk the um, you risk fungal disease if you leave it closed with a lot of humidity. Oh, no wonder my sprouts die. <laughs> that's probably it, it. Oh, that looks wonderful. And that's all there is to it. And that sounds like fun and there's different kinds of seeds. And different things. kinds of seeds. Um, we have a lot of sunflower seeds and we have marigolds and we if they want to do food we have lettuce and we have Beans. Beans are always fun. Yeah, um, beans are great. And then we also, we encourage them once, once the seeds are growing, once the little sprouts are up, the sunflower's not going to grow in this. It's going to have to be moved. And that's, we also give them, we usually have a little sheet on transplanting oh, so that they then good. know how to take it and put it out into the garden or into a bigger pot. At what point does it need to be transplanted? Usually when it has maybe four leaves on it. Okay. That's about the time to transplant. That's not bad. That's it's not bad, easy. and most kids can manage that. Most kids can and understand it. And they're so beautiful, too, those great big Oh, absolutely. Towering. This one has a, a really nice picture of a sunflower, but I was talking to Don earlier, and that the sunflowers come in sizes that are this big and sizes that are this big, and oh. they can be two feet tall and they can be ten feet tall. So, How fun. Thank you so much. And when is Earth Day this year? Earth Day is Saturday, April 23rd, uh -huh. and we will be having all kinds of different kids' activities in the Horticulture Center. So it's definitely worth coming and getting your hands dirty.
Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming and talking to us, Kate. My pleasure. My pleasure. We've been talking to Kate Jerome today uh, about Earth Day activities for children at Gateway Technical College. Please stay tuned for more with Jane Herring, Lee Colony, Kate Jerome, and myself for more activities for the whole family on Earth Day. This could be a bicycle. Or a bat. This could be a robot. Or an airplane. This could be a playground. This could be a book bag. Or a soccer ball. This could be a book. This could be beautiful. This cannot be trash. This can all be recycled. Learn more at thiscouldbe.org. And welcome back to Gateway Connections. I'm Jane Herring, and we're going to be talking about Celebrate Earth Day. And you've already uh, heard from Kate. Uh, Kate is, gave a demonstration, just an example of one small part of the Celebrate Earth Day event that is happening on April 23rd at the Kenosha campus of Gateway Technical College. And we have Lee Colony. Lee is a communications specialist with Gateway, but uh, the other half he wears is coordinator of a lot of the children's activities at the Center for Sustainable Living Barn as part of the Celebrate Earth Day event. Mm -hmm. So welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, we're having another great year of this event that has just continued to grow and grow and celebrate the environment in our community. Uh, we've been so blessed with having uh, many activities, learning activities. We've been getting the Mahone Middle School more and more involved with all of their clubs and helping at all of the children's activities. And we, of course, in carriage rides. We have a shuttle bus taking people around the ground so that they can experience everything. And it's been quite the event. We, we don't even let weather get in our way. So I hope nobody else will as, uh, either. But I, I think I'd like to start with talking about kids' activities because it's all about educating our young people as to what they can do to improve the environment and live in a greener way. So we have activities happening in, in three different areas, uh, in the technical building, in the Pike Creek, Hor Pike Creek Horticulture Center, and at the Center for Sustainable Living in the Barn. So, Lee, you're kind of talking about two of those areas. I'm going yes. to have you begin with one, and that is the, the technical building. And I know that the, the White family, along with the Mahone Middle School students, have been coordinating activities in that area. So what will be happening in the technical building? You know, uh, again, as in years past, there will be hands-on craft activities that will go on in that technical building. Um, the White family every year has brought you know, some variation of an environmental and fun, green, uh, hands-on craft activity. And that will be, again, uh, this year in the technical building. Also in that same area, the Mahone Middle School students will be there with their science projects. They have 35 science projects that wow. they plan to bring there and talk about um, science and, again, the environment and the earth. Uh, local teacher and author Pam Dem Domkowski uh, has parlayed her book into a 15-minute play. Oh, wonderful. And there will be five presentations of that play in that technical building area. And that's about uh, plastic bag banning, correct? Which is a really hot issue these days. Yes, yes, and I believe the main character is a, is a raven, if ah. I remember correctly, and talking about uh, plastic bags and their detrimental effect on the, the environment. So really you have- really birds. <laughs> right, right. So you really have a great uh, span of, of activities, very hands-on, interactive. Then you have kind the presentation. Kind of age group. Would you say uh, a little bit all, a little bit on the younger end? In yes, that I would say probably, you know, four years old through third grade. Okay, is what I would guess. Sense. I think the uh, the hands-on craft activities obviously are on the younger end, but but the play and then the um, the students from Mahone Middle School talking about their projects. I mean, that would be for for all age groups. <laughs> 
And one other thing to mention for the technical building, now that's in room T115 yes. where those big activities are going. But as you walk down the halls, there's always uh, a couple of favorites. Uh, a longtime favorite has been the Kenosha Bike Ambassadors, and they come with a bicycle that generates electricity and operates, I believe it's a, a race car running around a track mm -hmm. and a couple of other things. I know there's a goldfish that's doing things in a uh, in water and they, I I can't get close enough to be perfectly honest because there's so many kids taking part in those activities. And a fairly new addition has been the Kenosha Public Museum, and they have activities that help kids understand the Great Lakes. So already in that building there's a lot going on. And then they just walk across the, the, the path over to the Pike Creek Center. And Kate, what, what is going on there? Well, we have Mahone with us as well. We're going to be making geo pets, which are little like chia pets, but they're made with grass seed instead of chia seeds, and they're made in recycled um, nylons oh, filled yeah. with soil, and then they, they get to glue googly eyes on them and all kinds of fun things. And then we'll have our planting activity for the, for the kids. Um, we also are having, we have a lot of different exhibits that kids, they can come in and taste local honey. We have a honey uh -huh. supplier that is there, not just kids, I mean the adults can do it too. <laughs> we'll have a smoothie bar going on, um, mm. demonstrating kids love that healthy too. smoothies. Something that they can eat is always popular, always <laughs> popular. Um, the, we have a community service activity going on before the Earth Day actually oh, yeah. starts. Right. Um, that starts at 8 o'clock in the morning and that's for probably a little bit older kids and their families. We're doing a creek, Pike Creek cleanup and our horticulture club is sponsoring that and we'll get everybody out with their gloves and their boots and, and clean up the creek and then come back afterwards and talk a little bit about what community service learning means to the community and to each individual and each person will walk away with a certificate, a ser yeah. service learning certificate, which is nice. You're saying uh, clean the Pike Creek. And I think, it, just briefly, I, a lot of people don't realize that behind our campus there is a, a waterway and people hear pike and they start thinking about the river that comes off of Lake Michigan. Uh, tell me a little bit about what's behind the Horticulture this Center. This is just a small, I don't know if you'd even call it a tributary, but it's a little offshoot from the Pike River. Um, it's, there's not a lot of heavy water flow in there, but there is enough water flow that we have a lot of garbage collect. So we will be collecting garbage, but the other thing that we'll be doing is um, we will be pulling garlic mustard. Garlic mustard is an invasive weed that is taking over the woods everywhere, and it's the best way to control it actually is in a healthy way instead of using an herbicide is to hand pull it. And it's a wonderful feeling to get out there and pull it because the soil is still moist and mm. it comes up. It's easy, to, it's easy to pull, and it smells good. It smells like garlic. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, so that we'll be doing that. So it's with a, a two-pronged approach. We'll be cleaning up the Pike Creek, and then we'll also be pulling these invasive weeds. So as we're we're kind of circling around, we we've started in the technical building, and we've gone west to the uh, Pike Creek. Hor Why am I having so much trouble <laughs> with that today? Pike Creek Horticulture Center, and then we go back uh, to where the creek is. And if you follow the creek up to the north, you're now on the center for sustainable living property. And you're going up a hill and you get to the barn. Mm -hmm. And that's where another center for children's activities are. And you can either walk it or you can take the shuttle bus that will be available. Uh, and what will we find in the barn? There's a lot of activities that are essentially based out of the barn. So let's just start with the barn itself. So the, uh, the theme this year is trees. So there will be some activities where Children probably again four years old through third grade. Uh, there'll be some hands-on interact interactive activities on uh, you know wood products. What because uh, there are many things in our everyday life that use wood or cellulose or other wood products that um, you know the children will be learning about learning about through an interactive activity. There, uh, there will be learning about the animals that uh, use trees as their home. Mm. There will be real animals there from the Bong uh, Nature Center. Great. They are bringing their animals back again, I believe, for the sixth straight year. Very popular. Uh, all um, salamanders. And, yep, and salamanders, kind of frogs, thing. turtles. Kids love them. Adults actually I, like I them too. I love them too. <laughs> um, and a couple other activities, all all 
based on trees. Very interactive again uh, with, with the children. The Mahone Middle School students, again, their presence is Everywhere. throughout the, <laughs> the event. They will be there uh, with a couple activities as well, and they'll be helping for those two, or actually it's more than two, it's probably, I'd say four to five activities there. Also in the barn will be our KUSD Celebrate Earth Day poster contest winners. We're going to announce that at noon. So ah. there'll be a small celebration there. Every year we partner with KUSD and uh, children essentially in grades kindergarten through eighth submit posters uh, to celebrate Earth Day. Again, wood and forests and trees are our focus this year. So the winners and, and the posters will be within that barn area. Moving across the very small uh, driveway to the center itself, uh, within there we will have on a very large TV screen all the posters oh, that were submitted to that contest in a, on a continual loop. So for parents and who want to see if their child didn't win but they still would like to see their poster or, or some of their friends posters that will all be in there um, and within the center itself uh, we've used many different sustainable uh, building techniques and and there are displays within there that visitors can see you know how the center was remodeled or built using sustainable um, materials Going behind the center, I know I'm, I'm moving around here, going behind going the this, center. You're still going my same direction yep, of north, yep. thank you. <laughs> uh, there, there are two activities there. The Hoy Audubon Society mm -hmm. will have a member there who will be doing bird hikes. And then further north is a nature trail that is, uh, ha is part of the center for sustainable living. Um, during, the, I guess you could say during the week, K through 12, Children and students use that as part of their curriculum, environmental curriculum. On Celebrate Earth Day, the Mahone Middle School students will be giving tours of that trail. We're getting to urban farm season, and while I don't want to really move away from Celebrate Earth Day, the event on April 23rd, uh, I know you have such an exciting season planned. I don't want to miss the opportunity to talk about uh, the new urban farm and what everybody can enjoy with the farm stand. We are. We'll be actually, we'll have a booth um, for our farm stand. Our kickoff day is April 28th, the following Thursday. Ooh, so, coming up. And it's a, uh, an urban farm stand, farm market that is open to the public, and we'll be using that classroom for music. We'll have children's activities with children's story time, all kinds of things. And on Earth Day, you can come and tour the farm. Uh, we have spinach growing like, right now like crazy. Wow. So you can come and each, each, even a see a few things growing, believe it or not. Um, it's a wonderful place to come and just and get ideas for your own home garden as well. I want to go and play now. <laughs> <laughs> so we've talked about uh, Pike Creek Center. We concentrate on the kids' activities, but uh, as you mentioned, there are a lot of displays that will be going on there that and live music uh, for entertaining. Live music and a plant sale. We're having a uh, big plant sale that day, so you can come and wander through the greenhouses. We have cool season annuals and vegetables and herbs ready to go. Um, we'll have a lot of students around eager to answer questions and to help you make your purchases. We will be giving away free oak trees to everyone that comes to Earth Day, so that will be set up in the greenhouses as well. And then in our building we will have uh, booths for uh, vendors to set up. We have the, a honey person, a honey, um, what do you call an apiarist? I can't say that very Ooh. well. but. Um, a, a beekeeper, a beekeeper, a professional beekeeper, and he brings his he brings his bees. He brings a bee display as well as the honey. So that's wonderful for kids to see. Oh yeah. And we'll have several other green vendors in there for you to come and look at. We were we are also doing a used book sale. So mm. um, you can't turn around without seeing something interesting and fun there. Oh, that's for sure. And it also is going to be the the stop for getting a horse and carriage ride, which are free. Um, it, 
we're doing something a little bit different for those who have come in the past. Rather than having to get in line and waiting for your turn, when you get in line, you'll get uh, something that'll say uh, kind of a reservation slip. So you can go back into the Pike Creek Center and observe and enjoy, or go back into the technical building and observe and enjoy, and then come back at your assigned time. So you don't have to miss too much of Celebrate Earth Day. You can. Uh, uh, still get your horse ride and you can do all the great activities because there's so much to see and do between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. do want to remind people that you can get the details at gtc.edu forward slash Earth Day and we have events going on at both our Elkhorn and our Kenosha locations so if by some chance you have family who live out in Walworth County or you're visiting out going for the day in Lake Geneva and you want to take a zoom over to our Elkhorn campus you most certainly can enjoy the events that are going on there as well. Now we have information booths that will be also happening uh, in primarily in the technical hallway and the service hallway. We already have close to 40 exhibitors that have signed up and I'm continuing to get uh, additional reservations coming in. So uh, by the end of the, the month, I, I, I know by the time of Earth Day, we'll be pretty much full up with some really great vendors. So I really want to spend the last couple of minutes talking about our in uh, the technology and electronics recycling because that is something that's been so popular over the years and I know you, both of you folks have seen that. Oh yeah. I've used it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. You know, you see the carts going through the hallways. Uh, we actually will have the truck parked uh, on the south side of our campus. So the southmost entrance to campus, you can come in, drive through, and drop off your electronics. Uh, they will take virtually everything, but the tube TVs and the tube monitors, and we all have some in our attic, don't we? Uh, they can be brought, but that will cost you $20 each. Uh, everything else will be free. So bring your laptops, your computers. They will, the students, uh, from the project management course of our computer support specialist program will be there with a drill press. They will destroy the hard drives before things get recycled so you have uh, complete knowledge that your personal information will be removed. They will also share with you about kill disks which allow you to take that personal information off of your devices. So anything from cell phones, computers, the, both the towers, laptops, monitors, television sets, you know, the flat screens, uh, all of that can be recycled. And I really hope that I find a little bit of free time between now and April 23rd uh, to haul out uh, those two laptops that I have hidden in one closet or another and just get rid of them. Apparently, I'm not going to use them anymore. <laughs> Are you like that? Do you oh, yes. keep things oh, like yeah. forever? Yep. I do. I do because it, well, someday, maybe one of my daughters will use it. No. Well, no, because it has no memory, right? Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's 20 <laughs> years it's old. If we tried to use it, we would be very frustrated. Yeah. Right. Right. It'd be like I was why I got a new one, right? <laughs> oh, well. I, I imagine we're not the only ones out there. But I do encourage people to enjoy Celebrate Earth Day. Again, that's April 23rd. Both the Kenosha and the Elkhorn campuses are having great events. Uh, do look at the website. There's some special things happening on our Elkhorn campus uh, with a gardener's swap that uh, if I could be in two places at once, I would be because that looks awesome to bring plants, tools, you name it, for gardeners. So you plan, your, plan your trips accordingly. Uh, and I do want to thank our, our guests today, Kate Jerome and Lee Colony. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sure, we'll I know we, we have a busy rest of the month getting everything planned. And we'll be back with more of our Gateway Connections right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to Gateway Connection. Thank you so much for watching. Today, our episode on Earth Day, which is April 23rd. 
Um, we hope to see you there at Gate, uh, Gateway on the Kenosha campus and the Elkhorn campus. And see you next time for another episode of Gateway Connection.